Hi guys, after several months of waiting, the cutie moon rod is finally here. Here's how the box looks like. It's a really long, big box. And it's very fancy. It's pink, and there's metallic -y print all over it and sparkles. This is the back. It's interesting to note that this is the first Sailor Moon wand box that's horizontal. Even in the 90s, all of them were vertical. When you first take it out, it's in this big plastic packaging. The wand is wrapped with tissue paper and plastic and it's tied down. I've taken it out and here's the wand. And the stand is in pieces that you have to build. And the instruction booklet. The wand is very beautifully made. A lot of care and attention have been put into the details. I love this long thin handle, it's really fancy. When I hold it, I like to put my hand near the center because sometimes when I put my weight all at the end there, the plastic creaks and I feel like it might not be that safe. There are three different gold tones, the moon, the wings, and the heart outline. Here are the buttons. And now the stand. As you can see, there is no battery compartment. Instead, it's really well hidden inside this ball. To open it, you oops, touch this button. This little dot is actually a button. When you press it, this half of the ball pops off. And then you'll need a screwdriver to open up this part. And this is actually an on-off switch. So right now it's at the X, which means off. When you press the buttons, nothing will happen. So it's on now. I already have batteries in there. I've unscrewed it, and here's how you take it off. And these are the batteries that go inside. It's this type. The LR44. It's the same as the Moonstick one. So you just put it in there. And you close it back up. Turn it on. And you pop the ball back in. We finally get to the fun part, how it works. So you see three buttons here. None of them actually trigger the music or sounds. It's the button on the back. You see five lights along the moon. So when you press the top button, the lights change level. So second time, third time, fourth time, and fifth click. So once it's lit up here, you press the back button and it'll play the music that's meant for this first level.
Personally, I find the sound, like the volume, kind of loud. So you can adjust that with the middle button. But in order to adjust it, you have to press it during its playing. So I'll show you now with the second level. And you press this back button again. There's four volume levels, so you just keep clicking it to switch between the levels. And now I'll show you the third sound. And now the fourth sound. Now finally the last one. And when you long press this button, so there's a total of six sounds. This last button, you must be wondering what it does. It's actually not a real button. It doesn't do anything. Now I'll show a quick comparison between the original 1993 Japanese one and this 2014 one. Here they are side by side. There really is no comparison. Just from one glance, you can tell which one's the toy and which one's the replica. The new one has much sharper edges and a lot more details. It's a lot more accurate to the anime too. If you look at the top where the crown is, this one looks like this. And this one has a screw in the back. And then if we compare the backs, the speakers are really well hidden in this one, while it's very obvious for this. And then the battery compartment. This one's a lot heavier. And this one feels a lot more like cheap plastic. And now I'll play you the sound. It's the first button.
and this one. I cut it short because the sound on the new one is a lot longer, but you can tell that the sound quality is a lot more crisp and sharp. The lights have more patterns too. This one is easier to tell. Overall, I'm really happy with this purchase. I think it'll make a great collector's piece. At $100, it is kind of expensive but I think it's worth it for the quality and accuracy, and I can't wait to see what they do next. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.